Thank you very much, Linus. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I am very, very grateful to Linus because there are, there are many definitions of power, but there is nothing more powerful, nobody more powerful than a person who owns their own media house. And he tells me that, be careful what you say because I can decide what makes it to the press. <laughs> um, so beyond this intimidation, we have otherwise worked very, very well together. And I believe this has been of benefit to many of you. Uh, could I ask, just by a show of hands, how many of you over the last year have been featured by the Business Daily or the Nation free of charge uh, in, in, in their press? How many of you? Just Thank you. Thank you, Linus. Because this was one of the objectives of, uh, of, of, of uh, the top 100, that in celebrating, in recognizing, in en enhancing your exposure, we begin to show the rest of Kenya that there are people who are doing something and, and the Nation Media Group uh, provides us that avenue, and I believe they are doing a very fine job of it. So let's give them a big hand. <laughs> but I think the, the other point that I also want to talk about today is um, we, we are very decisive in terms of how we want to structure this survey. Um, we have thought through this process, and as Linus has said, um, the credibility of our two organizations is attached to the results that we produce. And really what we wanted to encourage is the transition of SMEs from what we call the Juakali sector to more formal sector. Because we really want to encourage you to be global businesses. And therefore we don't want you to continue with those practices of doing business on the basis of the back of envelope numbers that you can produce your accounts by, by a piece of paper. You know, this, this is my, my annual account, and that's the end of that. We want to encourage greater formalization. We want to encourage uh, the setting up of formal systems to manage your business because we know, especially in the business that we are in, that you lose a lot of value by not having the information that you need to track your sales, to track your purchases, to track your performance within the business. And, and therefore, uh, we are very, very decidedly uh, focused on the numbers, focused on making sure that those people, those of you who are capable of maintaining these systems will be able to be eligible on this, uh, 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 in this survey. And so we are not, we would like to get to that 500 number eventually, and we know that there are a number of people who will need the three-year period to catch up in terms of keeping the numbers. But just putting this in context, you have a number of other surveys that are done in this region. You have uh, the Company of the Year Award. That attracts about 70 participants. You have the Fire Award. That attracts possibly about maybe another 70, 50 to 70 people. Um, you have you know, um, uh, others trying sort of to recognize the, the, the biggest companies or the most respected CEOs, and again, the numbers are below 100. So the, 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 the track record we have demonstrated over the last three years of getting beyond 200 is still the best that you can get in this market, and we are very proud of it. Um, and so we encourage, we, we would like to grow it, uh, and we would like more people to come on board, but we don't want to dilute the quality of participants. We want you to sit in this room to be proud that you're sitting amongst other people who are leading their businesses as any other business can be led, uh, perhaps anywhere in the world. Because many of you have also recognized that the biggest challenge you are facing is competition. Now, you're not going to survive in this world in these very uh, harsh competitive areas by running your business as a Juakali. So we're actually challenging you to, bench your mark, to benchmark yourselves against the best and to strive to improve your performance every single year, to come here and share ideas. If your company is only five years old, there are others here which are 25 years old. Ask them what happened in that five-year period. What challenges did you face? How did you overcome them? and you can mentor each other 
and you can help each other to grow and we can expand the network of businesses um, that, uh, that are participating in this category. But the process um, working in partnership with Sinovet is also generating a lot of knowledge. Um, and that knowledge is very useful for all of us. We are in the business of turning knowledge into value. We are in the business of uh, breaking down complexity so that we can help you see things clearly. Um, and we can only share only a little bit of that knowledge from what Philip has presented here today. We have many other fora we use for you to come together to get more insights into what has come out of this survey, to get to understand how do I stand um, within the construction industry? What opportunities exist for me to expand in the region? How can I partner with other players who are coming to the region who are interested uh, in, in, uh, in investing in this market? Uh, so this knowledge and you know, with the people like the um, uh, Strathmore Business School, we also want them to take a very keen look at some of this information, the results of the survey, and analyze that information and using the medium of the business daily, generate uh, an analytical uh, material that will help us to understand how we are affecting uh, this economy. For example, when you looked at the transport, we are just talking about the transport performance, you know, and this very high um, uh, rate of return. Is that good for the economy? You notice that, for example, the, the, there was a very small increase in their revenue, but there's a very high increase in their rate of return. So where is that coming from? It suggests price. Now, when price increases in transport, every single one of us is affected, and the cost of doing your business. So some, some of this could actually help to inform our policy within the country, uh, so that even as those of you who are within the transport industry uh, stay in it, but I'm sure uh, these super profits will be managed in time to come. Um, but the most important thing for us is that we want to challenge, and Linus has put this very well, we want to challenge all of you to get out of, um, of sort of the Kenya cocoon, to get out of the Nairobi cocoon, to get out of the Mombasa cocoon, and to begin to operate as a regional business and to operate as a regional business that is creating wealth, that is creating employment, that is demonstrating very high standards of innovation, and as we have seen in many of you, that is giving back to the communities within which you operate and helping to grow those communities. And to put these things in perspective, we, we were talking about um, India and China, 1 billion, 1.3 billion uh, people. Those are big players. And in another forum that I was participating in, both of those countries have decided Africa is their priority target. Because of the resources that we have here, because of the unexploited business opportunities, India in particular has got a lot to share with us. Uh, I think it was last year that we brought CK Prahalad here to share with us on how you get value from the bottom of the pyramid, the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, that experience in India is perhaps what Bharti are going to be using here to challenge the telecoms model. So they believe they have something to offer, and they are certainly going to be looking for partners uh, to, uh, to uh, enter into this market. The question is, are many of you going to be prepared uh, to participate uh, in that business? Are you preparing yourself um, well enough uh, to engage with these businesses as they come. And this is a pool that we are providing, uh, private equity. Anybody who wants to celebrate uh, medium-sized businesses are actually first coming to us and asking, you know, can you give us somebody within the category of information technology or within construction or within transport who perhaps we can begin to talk to? Um, obviously, they will carry out their own due diligence, but it's providing an avenue through which investors can begin to... Um, to access this market. So we have many opportunities, and this is why we are talking about the East African um, theme uh, this year, um, one market, more growth opportunities. And as Linus has said, we need to look at this market in its own perspective. Um, the 130 million population, when you compare the land surface area here, uh, East Africa alone is about 1.7 million square kilometers. We are endowed with minerals. 
we are finding oil uh, in Uganda, in Kenya. Um, we have good agricultural land. We've got uh, good uh, tourism uh, facilities. Um, and many of these are unexploited. When you look even broadly, more broadly, uh, you look at um, southern Sudan, they access uh, their market through here. You look at eastern Congo, you look at Ethiopia, um, with its nearly 100 million people, um, one million square kilometers. You can set up businesses here that can actually grow to be global businesses because of the market opportunities that you have here. When you look at Eastern Congo, for example, and its hydro capacity, anybody who is in the energy business needs to be looking at that area. I understand feasibility studies there have shown you can actually have one power plant generating more than 50,000 megawatts. One power plant. Now, putting that in perspective, uh, Owen Falls is about 180 megawatts. The entire South African power is about 48,000 megawatts. So you've got capacity there that can actually help to light up the entire continent. Who are the investors who are going to access that capacity? Is it going to be some of you, or are we going to allow the Chinese to walk in and do three of those projects? So we have very many opportunities. Um, I think Linus has done the job of challenging you Within the next uh, five years, um, every year we want to see graduation. There are 11 people here within the current year that we want to see graduating into Club 101 uh, next year. We want that, num that number to be growing uh, uh, every single year. We want many of you to demonstrate that you have expanded your locations throughout East Africa, and you can come and share lessons with us. We want to see you increasing employment, as, as Linus has said. And there's a point I keep making about employment. Please do make sure, as you hire the 50 people that you're intending to hire over the next three years, make sure that those people are hired purely on merit. You cannot do more damage to your business than bringing individuals who do not deserve to be in your business. Whether they are family or whether they are children of your friend, whether they are recommended to you by politicians. Make it your business as a leader of your organization to focus on bringing top talent, to focus only on allowing merit to determine the person who comes in to contribute to your business. Because as we said, skills are going to be critical. Everything else, everybody now possibly has the information on what's available here. How quickly you respond to those opportunities is going to depend on the capacity that you have. That capacity largely in terms of the skill, but also largely in terms of the access to finance. And therefore we have, as Linus has said, we have to broaden our, our, our access to finance and the stock exchange um, uh, presents other opportunities. There is a lot that we can share. I don't want to spend too much time here. Um, but there's so much information. All of this is going to be put on the website. We'll organize other events. Give us direct feedback as KPMG's Nation Media Group as to how we can improve this event because we are all very, very committed to transforming the top 100 to really the top club within East Africa. We are going to be uh, doing the same thing in a month or so in Uganda uh, for our uh, second year now. Um, we are going to be starting in Tanzania. So this is going to actually be truly an East African initiative, and we want to see some of you in those events as well because you are operating at an East African level. Good luck. Enjoy the conference today, and we look forward to the dinner tomorrow. Thank you.